Hey there, welcome to today's episode of Canadian Retro Things. Today, we're going to have a look at uh, some of my collection of plug and play machines that I own. Although these machines don't look that great by today's standards, these are exactly the thing that my younger self would have gone crazy for back in the 80s. Now the question is, how do they hold up in comparison to the untold number of high resolution games you can get on your smartphone nowadays? First, we're gonna have a look at some of the more interesting consoles that I own. I have here a collection of what are probably my favorite uh, plug and play games that I currently own. At the back I have a couple that are made by different companies. The Intellivision one here has 25 different Intellivision games on it. The one that looks like an Atari joystick has 8 different Atari games on it. And the rest of these are all made by a company called Jax Pacific, which in the early 2000s probably released the most plug-and-play games of any company and they were all licensed so they were licensed from movies and licensed from actual games at the front here we have Golden Tee which uh, is a great one uh, it's probably the best arcade port here that uh, it's just like the game you would find in any bar back in the early 2000s And then there's, of course, Mortal Kombat, which is an interesting one because it's one you can actually hook more than one controller together and play against each other. Uh, the Batman here, it looks like a bat boomerang, um, is actually the 60s Batman. It's not any of the newer ones, which I really like. And up here we have World Poker Tour, which is the only machine that I bought new from the store. The rest of these I've picked up second hand. And over here is the one that I find probably the most interesting. As you can see it's Darth Vader's face. So this is a Star Wars game, but it's a game key plug and play machine, which is I find uh, very interesting and something I'll get into more later in the video. As I mentioned, the World Series of Poker game was the only one that I bought brand new. And it is a game that I played hundreds of hours on over the years. Back in the early 2000s, I didn't have a smartphone and I didn't have a laptop computer. So whenever I traveled, this is what I took with me. Wherever I stayed, I could just hook it up to a TV and play a game. And I loved it. To this day, it's still the plug and play machine that I play the most often. As I mentioned before, this is one of the more unique plug and plays that I own. It's called a game key plug and play. There are cartridges available for it that allow you to expand the number of games you can play on it. When you turn it on without the cartridge, you have five games that you can play. When you insert the cartridge and turn it back on, you now have two more games you can play. So now this unit has an available seven games. These game key cartridges were something that Jack Pacific started in July of 2005. Unfortunately, the platform struggled and failed to catch on, partly because of resistance from retailers to stock the cartridges. It was discontinued less than a year later in 2006. The way that the game key works is that this cartridge contains a ROM with additional games on it. When the cartridge is inserted into the handset, then the address line is hard switched from the internal ROM 
to the cartridge ROM. Thus, you cannot access the original games from the handset, only the games that are included on the game key. So what are the drawbacks of these? Well, definitely the fact that they only take batteries. I remember a number of times playing the World Series of Poker Machine, and I'd be in the middle of a long tournament, and the batteries would start to die. And you can't save in the middle of a tournament. You can only save your progress after you finish the tournament. And it's the same on a lot of the games. You can't, you only, um, fin you can only save your progress after you finish a round or after you finish, you can't save in the middle of anything. So adding more save points would be nice. And I've heard a lot of people say that they wish that it wasn't just composite out on these, that uh, there was also there was ones that came with HDMI out. But you got to remember that the graphics on these are not that spectacular and uh, having HDMI out on it wouldn't look all that great. On the positive side, some of these controllers are really little works of art. I mean, you've got this one with Darth Vader's face, so you know that's going to be Star Wars games. You have Batman's boomerang. You know, you're going to be playing a Batman game with this one. And you're certainly not going to be surprised when you plug this one in and you end up playing old Atari games. And the feel of the controllers, the joysticks, are so much nicer than pushing on a uh, touch screen. I've never liked playing games on touch screens. It's just doesn't feel right. I like to have the tactile feeling of the joysticks. So yeah, I think these are worth collecting. They're fun to play. They're nice to display. I mean, that's what collecting is about. Something that is fun to play and nice to look at. So yes, I do recommend collecting these. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can give me a thumbs up. You can uh, leave a comment below. You can even subscribe to my channel. If you uh, didn't enjoy the video, you can give me a thumbs down and hey, thanks for watching it all the way to the end. Anyway, I'm going to go plug this in and play some poker. So I'll see you next time.